Uh, so, uh, it is prob uh, propagated in Turkey that the marriages between cousins are always uh, harmful and children are handicapped in birth. What is the Quranic teaching regarding this subject? The Quranic teaching is... Uh, translation, please. As far as the Quranic teaching is concerned, it's all very clear. Every Muslim knows that this is permitted by the Holy Quran. And if it was in any way detrimental to human health, God would not have permitted this. Or God could not do, would not have created humans as such. That way, things which he wanted to permit, he had decided to permit, would carry mischiefs. So the mischief which is referred to is not because of the marriages among cousins. It is because of an entirely different thing. You know, the chromosomes and genes carry certain characters in every human cell. In reproductive cells, when some gene is diseased, sometimes it is just partially diseased. And by itself, it cannot show its effect on the offspring. But sometimes, by accident, the other partner also has the same gene. And when they two meet, then the disability of the child or the disease nature, whatever it is, of the child becomes apparent and becomes pronounced. Because that gene is multiplied with a similar gene of the other partner creates this uh, problem of a dominant character appearing in the public eye. Like uh, there are some people who suffer from a subdued form of anemia. Yet their anemia does not show itself much. Not to, to obstruct the passage of the ordinary daily activities of life. But when two similar persons are married, they are not necessarily from the same family. This is the point which I want to make. Any girl can have this character, even if she is married outside. There is a chance of the person from the other family also having the same ailment. So when these two meet, then the children are born congenitally defective. So it has nothing to do with family marriages. The accidents do take place. But nowadays, we know that the scientists have advanced enough in the recognition, in the art of recognition of these diseases before marriages. And anyone can find out from a doctor whether this lady should be married to such a person and genetically they can be examined. So if that is the reason, then in the family members they may not marry because it's not essential. It's just permitted. So it's no longer any problem for the mankind today. It is a myth that the inter marriages of families create these problems. And this myth is now finally broken by scientific investigation. The latest investigation gives a light to this uh, notion, which has become popular among people somehow, that internal marriages are responsible for causing congenital defects among children. The best way to decide would be to carry out research at large scale. And this is what the Muslims unfortunately do not do. The answer which I have given you is just academic. It is not finally compulsive on the non-believers. So the best way I suggest would be to compare specimens from the Christian societies which do not permit inter uh, 
affair relation, inter-family marriages, that is, marriages among cousins and even some distant cousins, and find out from their birth, the evidence of their births among them, how many congenitally ill children are born among them, how many distorted children are born among them, and then have a specimen examination of the Muslim societies all over the world. Because just an examination in one place in Syria or in Egypt would not suffice. It has to be carried out on a global scale, this experiment, this uh, research, and uh, specimens should be taken from Indonesia, from Malaysia, from Japan, from Arabia, from Pakistan, from Bangladesh, etc. And it should be determined what is the incidence of congenitally ill births. And then a comparison, large comparison with, uh, with the Christian society's cases of congenital illness would become a decisive factor. But it requires a large-scale research and it's not as simple as, as it appears because there's so many other factors which have to be taken into account. So many other causes which cause congenital defects like the smoking habit among the girl, women who are pregnant. They can cause some damage to the embryo and to the child as yet unborn. So it's not a simple statement to be taken as such as which I'm making. It's a very complex exercise to which I'm inviting the attention of the Muslim scholars. No, this is Lam would be here now. <laughs> I forgot to give chocolates to two other, you know, young boys who are not as yet married. Eh? Come here. <laughs> I have already given one couple of chocolates to your betrothed. Huh? And now, the last, the one who is not is that betrothed. <laughs> Poor thing, eh? Assalamu alaikum. Assalamu alaikum. Assalamu alaikum.